Honors Program. And uh, we have some students here, some staff here, and uh, a distinguished alum, all of whom can answer questions. And we'll be doing it, uh, we'll probably start, looks like almost everybody's in the room now. So maybe we should start now. So uh, we'll start with some introductions so you know who it is that's talking to you. Um, let me stop my sharing so that we can actually see some faces. We'll get the gallery open here. Um, all right, so I'm Scott Linneman. I'm the director of the honors program. I'm a professor at Western, uh, been at Western for 22 years, uh, working with the honors program for six. I see some faces that I have seen before. Uh, welcome, it's good to see you again. Um, today, uh, I'm joined by a staff member, Kirsten Horton. Do you wanna say hello? Hi, yeah, my name is Kirsten. I use she, hers pronouns. Um, I'm the uh, Honor Student Life Coordinator. So I work closely with the application process and um, students who are transitioning into Western, um, either as first year students or transfer students. Um, and so today I'm actually probably gonna be keeping my eye most closely on the chat. So um, if you guys uh, have any questions, you can always drop them in the chat and I'll do my best to um, either volley those out to the group so we can hear from the entire group or um, get your response in that chat window. Right, so we, we will be using the chat in just a moment. Uh, uh, Ruthie, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure, I'm Ruthie. I use she, they pronouns. Um, I'm from Seattle and I'm a senior in the Honors Program at Western. Um, so I'll graduate this quarter with a degree in creative writing, um, minors in linguistics and honors and a certificate in web content development. Um, and I've also studied abroad, so I can answer questions about um, the honors program and lots of stuff in the chat as well. All right, thanks, Ruthie. Uh, and yeah, Ruthie is really pr particularly quick in the chat. Uh, and so, um, Danny, would you like to introduce yourself? Yeah, I'm uh, Danny Edgel. I use he, him pronouns. I graduated from Western in 2016 with a major in economics, minors in math and energy policy, as well as from the honors program. And um, starting this last year, I'm a PhD student at the University of Wisconsin-Madison in economics. Excellent, it's great to see you again, Danny. Um, so our purpose for being in this Zoom room is to get your questions answered. Um, I actually have a question about who's here first, and that that's, um, uh, just makes it a little bit easier to know who's here. So one of the things I wanna do is just use the chat for that purpose. So we're gonna do a thing called a chat blast. And if you've been in these before, you know what I'm doing. So the um, I'm just gonna put up a question and you all just answer, right? So the first question from me is, what's your hometown and state? So you could just throw that in the chat. And up they come and look at how fast. All right, so kind of from all over. Very good. So the uh, second question I have for y'all is, um, let's see, I did this the other day and I gotta remember how it went. It is um, last, it's, it's your last good read or podcast. So what are you, what are you reading or listening to? Um, and go. NPR politics, nice. This is how I learn about the podcast that I should be listening to, is I ask our students and they come up with all sorts of good ones. Oh, and good, uh, good reading, right on. Okay. Um, let me show you what I'm reading. Um, it's kind of fun. I think I'm just getting to the really uh, kind of fun, interesting part now. Um, oh, I don't know if you can see it. It's called Clara and the Sun uh, by Ishiguro. Uh, really interesting speculative fiction. Um, okay, but that's not why you're here. You're not here to find out what I'm reading. You're here to ask questions about the honors program. Now, what what I can tell you is in my experience doing these things, we end up having a little bit of a mixed audience in a session like this. So I will kind of tell you what my experience says 
who's here. So we have students uh, who have applied to the honors program, who uh, have been admitted to the honors program. So this is category one. They've applied to the honors program, have been admitted to the honors program and have committed to come to Western and the honors program. So that's category one. Category two is people who've applied to the honors program have been admitted to the honors program and who uh, have not committed yet. They're still deciding, perfectly fine. You have until May the 1st. Category three, people who have applied to the honors program and maybe have gotten an email about being on a wait list for the honors program. Um, that's category three. Category four is people who maybe who haven't yet applied to the honors program. So I will tell you that mostly who I'm talking to today are people in those first three categories um, because we did have really quite a, um, a quite a big advocate pool this year um, on almost 1100 applications for the 200 slots that we're looking to fill for this fall. So um, for those of you who are in category one, great. It's great to have you along. We are gonna be sending you um, we're gonna be sending you emails about stuff we're doing this summer. There's, we've got honors program uh, programming going on this summer associating with um, summer reading and summer listening and summer um, video watching. Uh, it's all optional, you, you join if you want. We'll send you things about uh, activities in the fall and so forth. Um, if you're in category two, that is if you uh, are still deciding, um, great, take your time. You have until May 1st. But I can tell you that the people in category three would like to know what you're thinking. Um, so as soon as you do know whether you're coming to Western and whether you're going to join the honors program, please let us know, because that will help us know what we can and can't do with folks on the waiting list. So with that, um, I see there's some... Uh, um, some folks already throwing some questions in there. Um, here's the way you, you can either put the question in the wait list and if, and if uh, Kirsten or Ruthie think that it's a good one for sort of a general audience, they can bring it to my attention. If it's, um, if it's a specific one, they'll answer it right there in the chat. But if you wanna just um, use the hand raise function, uh, that works really well. I'll be able to see them right away call on people, you can unmute and, and ask your questions. <laughs> can you see my pet rock? Well, it's really a matter of which one you get to see. Uh, <laughs> um, you know, I don't think I have a rock on my desk right now. Um, if, if we get a break, you're gonna get to see a rock because um, I've got a lot of favorites here. <laughs> That's a dangerous question to ask of a geologist. <laughs> it is a dangerous question to ask a geologist. Geologists are really excited right now because there are, I mean, they're, they're, um, it's really bad for the folks uh, in, in St. Vincent in the, in the Caribbean, but there are two really spectacular eruptions going on in the world right now, one in Iceland and, and one in the Caribbean. So, all right, so here are some questions, one having to do with housing. Um, there are, um, there are uh, what we call accommodation housing in, in a number of different uh, dorms, uh, residence halls on campus. Um, the uh, Edens does have uh, a, a set, Edens Hall, which is the honors dorm, does have a, a set of um, accessibility rooms. Um, and uh, so, but that's something you'll have to work with uh, residents, the residents folks about. So the question that I was expecting to get right away, and uh, Carlin, thank you for jumping right in and getting it in there, is when will you find out if you're on this wait list? And the, um, the answer is probably not as soon as you would like um, in that, it's just about every selective program in the country saw a big increase in applications this year. And almost everybody is using more wait lists and bigger wait lists. And so the word coming, whether it's, whether it's UW or Pomona, the word is that the wait list wait is gonna be longer, that it will likely be into May, maybe even into June for some of those folks. Um, so what we did was send out uh, 
uh, an email um, to everybody saying, if you really would like to be on our wait list, please reply to this survey. Uh, and we, we heard back from a good proportion of the folks that, that uh, had originally been put on that wait list. That's a very important thing to do. If you have not done that, it's a really important signal to show us that you are still interested. Um, but for right now, we are um, just sort of waiting to see. And I can tell you, it's, it's a particularly weird year because students, high school seniors this year, seem, many of them seem to have waited until the very last hours of our application deadline. And so we're kind of expecting that there will be people waiting until the very last hours of the confirmation deadline. So we're kind of just hanging on. Um, yeah, so uh, the wait list is larger this year than it's been just because the uncertainty is so large. So we have over 100 people on the wait list right now. And normally we would keep on the order of 50 people on the wait list. Um, and, you know, it doesn't, you know, past, what have past years don't really matter. I can tell you what past years have been like, you know, almost everybody on the wait list in past years has eventually gotten uh, uh, an offer to, to join in the honors program. I just don't know what it's gonna be like this year just because things are so different. You know, we do have a few people, I don't know, 20 people or so who, uh, who uh, deferred last year that they took a gap year uh, and they were admitted and we, we saved their save spots for them. But it was, only, it was only 20, so it really doesn't affect the overall number as much. Um, so Austin is asking how the honors uh, community within Western compares to smaller schools, like liberal arts schools in, in Washington and Oregon. Um, well, um, there's, there's two ways to look at it. One is, in, in some ways, it's very similar in that we employ um, a curriculum uh, which uh, has common experiences throughout the first year, which is very common at places like Whitman or Willamette, um, Reed, Lewis and Clark. Um, we have, uh, you know, this, this uh, one dorm, dorm complex, Eden's Eden's North, and, and this year Higginson, Higginson Hall, another suite style dorm will be involved. Um, those, uh, so there is the, the living learning, we, we have activities that go on, uh, kind of all, all the time. But what I hear from students who do select Western, and maybe this is the kind of thing that Danny would want to speak to, is they'll, they'll choose the larger public university more because of the, well, maybe the, the research opportunities that happen at a larger uh, kind of research-oriented university, and also just the number of choices. There are so many more choices at a bigger university. Um, so we have something like 200 programs um, whereas a really good liberal arts school, you know, are doing great if they have 40. So, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm a product of a good liberal arts school. I love th uh, that. And I think that's why I'm involved in honors right now. Um, but I've also heard students who say, well, they, they, they like the idea of the public university because of the diversity, the student diversity tends to be higher. And then finally, you can't ignore the price tag. You know, it's just hard to, it's hard to compare um, the uh, price tag of a private to a public, especially if you're in state. Um, so yeah, the New York Times called it the, the best deal in higher education is public university honors colleges. So Danny, did you want to say anything about your choice of going yeah. to Western? Yeah, um, I, I can't speak too much to the uh, initial choice of going to Western in general. I come from a really small town and, and I um, didn't have a lot of choices outside of public universities in Washington um, for the reason of the price tag. <laughs> um, but having then selected into Western and specifically the Washington, the, the, the honors program, um, it was really appealing to me to be able to go to a place that was a, a big school so that I was able to get um, an experience that was divergent from the small town of being able to be in a place where there was like a broader array of opportunities and not feeling like everybody knew who I was and being able to have the experience of like not, um, you know, you know, being able to have a broader array of classes and not necessarily be like 
in a in a tiny community, but then also have the benefits that are afforded to having, you know, a sense of community and professors who I'm able to connect with at an individual level um, that came with honors. Like throughout the four years that I was there, like my honors seminars and my honors classes, and my honors advisors were all the same subset of professors who were invested in what I was doing. Um, ultimately, by the time I graduated, uh, <laughs> I had gotten um, a, a fellowship. I had gotten a Fulbright fellowship toward the end and I wouldn't have applied for it had I not been accosted by Tom Moore <laughs> between the summers of my sophomore and junior year um, saying like, hey, you had expressed an interest in applying for a graduate fellowship and I'm not gonna let you get away with not applying for one. <laughs> and you should come to my office and talk to me about it. I wanna find one that you can apply for. Um, and that's not something that, that would happen at a like general stream, larger university because your professors have like tons of students. Um, but it happens in the honors program because there are a small number of students who the professors know at an individual level. So the the Tom Moore that Danny's referring to is um, uh, Dr. Moore, who's been a long time uh, a teacher, professor in the honors program. And he's also the director of the um, fellowship center at Western. And, you know, the fellowship, the fellowship office is serves the entire university. So anybody can come and talk to Tom about uh, fellowships. It's just because he teaches in honors, he has his eyes on you know, potential candidates for these highly competitive uh, fellowships all the time. And uh, they, they tend to compete really well. So um, there was a question up here that I wanted to uh, refer to out of the chat, which had to do with um, oh, the uh, Annalise asked a question about the housing survey. Um, if you are admitted to the honors program, we are sending that list to the housing people so they know who is are, is, is admitted to the honors program. So you don't you don't have to worry about that. Um, if uh, and we also have another survey where we ask, you know, are you are you hoping to live in the uh, honors housing? Um, and then uh, there was a question about. Uh, do uh, can incoming credits be used to uh, affect the honors classes that you take in your first year? Um, and the answer is generally no. That we don't uh, we don't accept um, uh, prior credits, whether they're from AP or IB or Running Start or College in the Classroom, for your honors classes. Western in general is very generous about accepting uh, prior credits. And so those, it's not like you're losing those credits, but the um, honors curriculum is, uh, is something that we want everybody experiencing together. Um, now that said, if you have completed the full, like a DTA, a direct transfer agreement, and you have your associate's degree coming through running start, um, we do waive the, um, the colloquium part of the honors curriculum because those are, those are gen ed classes and you don't need more more gen ed classes. Um, but uh, no, we don't waive parts of the first year sequence, for example, um, unless you're transferring. So we've had students, you know, who transfer into Western Honors uh, in the last few years from from uh, Scripps and um, Claremont McKenna and Gonzaga and UW. And, and if the student has taken a class like one of our first year sequence, then we're then we're pretty happy to, to waive that. Um, Okay, so um, Branch asks a question. I don't know if this has been answered further down about um, being in honors limiting anything else that you do. And this might be something that, uh, you know, Ruthie, do you want to speak to that? Does being in honors limit other your participation with other things at Western? I would say no. Um, honors is like pretty much opt in in terms of like the community aspect of it. So there are events that the Student Honors Board puts on um, throughout the year and throughout the quarter and there's events that you can go to, um, but there's no requirement to attend outside of classes. Um, so there's tons of other clubs and events on campus that usually are more <laughs> during um, non-pandemic times that you can go to. Um, but yeah, I wouldn't say it limits it at all. Um, and then there's a question from uh, Annabelle about do you suggest honors housing for first year students? 
So um, I don't know, uh, Danny, did you live in Edens when you came through? Yeah, it actually started um, typing out a response to that one. Um, so I lived in Higginson, which is in the in the same housing cluster. The Edens Higginson is the same community. They, they sh share RAs and, and that type of stuff. Um, but it was not in the ha in the honors cluster. So I had access to Edens and, and spent a lot of time there. And I had friends who were in the honors cluster. And I also had a lot of friends in the honors program who lived outside of the cluster. So I kind of like got to see <laughs> the experiences of both of them. And typically you do see students who are living in the honors cluster associating more with each other and having more of a like close-knit honors community when they live in the cluster. And those who live outside of it to have friends who are in honors, but like uh, a, a more mixed non-honors, honors like social community. Um, so I, I personally think that that's something that's based on personal preference. If you'd like to have a, a social group that's that's more um, honor centric, then you should go for living in Eden. Um, but at the same time, if if you like the aspect of honors that comes with the the academics of it, but don't necessarily have a desire to build your like social life around it, then you know no, don't worry too much about living in the honors cluster. I personally found my my social experience at honors being like probably 50% honors despite having not lived in the cluster. So I don't think it necessarily inhibits your um, ability to be close to the program and feel close to the program. I felt extremely right. close so, to the program despite not living in the cluster. Yeah, and for that reason, and because we have students who are living all over campus, I mean, I do highly recommend living on campus in your first years because that is how you're going to, you know, make a lot of friends. Um, uh, but we do have students who, like Danny, will choose to not live in Edens, and that's fine. And that's why we have centered most of the honors activities not in the dorm, but in the honors center. So, um, unfortunately, probably very few of you have had a chance to get into the honors center and the honors classrooms because they've been locked up this year. Um, but it's it's a really nice facility and it's it's the place where people meet, it's the place where people hang out and it's the place where uh, uh, students, you know, the book club meets there and the student honors board meets there and the honors student of color group meets there. And that's where they do the art gala and that's where they do pizza and profundity. And, and, and it's a really wonderful facility that they um, that they created for us three years ago. So uh, that's, we, we try to center activities there, recognizing that there are students in other places. Of course, you know, it's about 44 feet to get from the corner of Edens to the corner of Old Main. So it's a, a pretty close commute. And actually getting from Higginson into Edens is pretty short too. Um, and in fact, uh, things are gonna be a little bit different next year because about half of the 2020 cohort didn't ever come to campus. They did all of their first year, or they are doing all of their first year of college decision. I mean, their first year of college from their childhood bedrooms. And so they are looking forward to a first year of college experience. And so we've arranged for them to have priority access into Higginson. So Danny, if you were in Higginson this coming fall, it would be full of honors students, but they would be second year honors students. And Edens and Edens North will have more first year honor students in there. So um, Kirsten or Ruthie, are, have there been any questions that I should speak to that you've seen? Um, uh, I think actually maybe two, two things to maybe touch on. Um, first of all, just some general interest on curriculum and really specifically on what the first year experience is like. Um, and if classes are more discussion based, how they, um, what that typical style is. And then second, um, questions about uh, summer Greece trip and how things are working with COVID. Right, right. So good, uh, very relevant question. So the first one um, is described pretty well uh, on the website, but let me just say the, the honors first year sequence is a series of three humanities classes um, that have the common uh, title and the common theme of navigating the human experience. 
um, kind of starting from the ancient world and moving to uh, modern world, the spring class being more of a comparative culture class. Um, they count for general education classes. So when you complete that sequence of three classes, you get two humanities requirements, one comparative culture requirement. And because they're all you know, 18 to 22 students and very discussion and writing oriented, they are, um, you get a communications requirement as well. So you get four gen ed requirements for taking those three classes. Um, you know, the question often comes up, uh, are the honors classes more work? Um, well, what I generally say is that they're different work. And here's a little, something a little more specific. So instead of, um, instead of just listening to lecture, you're more likely to be discussing what you've uh, read or what you've written in the class. And so preparing uh, to, to do well in that class is probably not cramming for a midterm or a final. It's more likely that you're preparing by coming into class ready to discuss. So I think that's probably the fairest way to say. So, um, you know, it, it the, the work tends to be spread out more. And then, you know, they almost all have some sort of uh, final project, but these days they, they're, um, they're not always strictly writing projects. There are some that are really quite creative. Um, then the question about study abroad. Um, I wish I had a definitive answer, but it's starting to get a little more clear right now that the, Euro the rollout of vaccines in Europe has been disappointing to them especially. And so right now, Greece is still um, categorized uh, as such by the State Department that Western is not allowing students to travel there. Um, it's, you know, it's a long time between April and September, but, you know, there's a lot of planning that has to go into place. So I'm becoming increasingly pessimistic about the Greece program running this fall. And um, we will let people know, um, you know, anybody who showed any interest, uh, Dr. Goldman will will be in touch. Um, but what that means is it'll probably get shifted to 2022. Uh, and Dr. Goldman has agreed to, um, to allow it to run bigger and probably bring another uh, faculty member or two with him because there are, you know, the 2020 cohort didn't get to do that. So there will be, you know, two years of students who are very interested. It's a, it's a super wonderful program. Um, the, the Ecuador program um, that I developed uh, is planning for 2022. Um, I mean, there's no way I would go down there right now. Things are really not in very good shape right now. They have a new president. And about 58% of the people seem pretty happy about the new president, but they, uh, they are um, struggling with lack of vaccines as well. So we are not planning to go uh, back to Ecuador until 2022. Um, okay, other questions. Uh, Kirsten, did you see anything else that um, maybe we can share a little bit about uh, student involvement outside of just academics. Sure. You mean uh, what honor students do? Right. Honor just um, is is honors. If I'm in honors, is that the only thing I will have oh. time for? Well, that's that's uh, that hasn't been my experience experience yet. Um, so the students tend to be involved in a lot of other things, whether they're clubs or activism or athletics. Uh, none of those would would be honors. Um, you know, it's, it's their choice. Uh, Western is a great place to provide lots and lots of different options. Um, and you opt in to that that you care about. Um, so there's, uh, you know, whether that's student research, you know, so we have students who are actually joining faculty research groups as first year students, occasionally, it's, it's, it's more rare that it's usually second, third year that they'll join a research group. Um, but they're, you know, they're in clubs, whether it's acapella or Beyonce or poetry or, um, you know, volleyball, I don't know. They're, I mean, and they'll do uh, intramurals. I mean, and intramurals goes everything from, you know, hyper competitive, I was a great high school athlete and I wanna keep competing at a pretty high level to, you know, hey, let's, let's get a team together on the floor and we don't care if we win, we're just going to have fun. And that, you know, that kind of thing happens all the time. So no, I don't think uh, 
honors doesn't seem to get in anybody's way of having having fun at college. Um, how do you get into those research groups? Asked Hannah. Um, good question. So it varies from department to department and faculty member to faculty member, but it, it typically is that you've uh, been exposed to a professor through a class and you approach them and you say, hey, do you, do you have a research group? And um, are you taking new students at this point? Some of them, the demand is high enough that they have an application system. Um, you know, what we know is that students who go through the um, honors chemistry sequence, they all tend to, to have invitations to join research groups, but that's because of that experience that they've done in their first year. Um, so it kind of, you know, I think you've probably heard me say this, that uh, research groups at Western are not the PhD students and the postdocs. You know, that's what Danny's experiencing over there or will experience at Madison. You know, our research groups are undergraduates. It's a faculty member and a group of undergraduates. And you know, we have, and that kind of varies from, you know, having one student and working one-on-one -on -one to there's, uh, you know, a wonderful psychology professor who teaches, who teaches in honors. And she, I just counted on her webpage and she's got 20 undergraduate research associates right now. So she has a, she has a big group and those people would be involved in proposal writing. They would be involved in discussion of experimental design. They would be involved in, you know, reviewing the literature together. So yeah, you ask, the answer is you ask and you, you drop the honors name and you, you can drop my name if you want. You can say, hey, I was having an advising meeting with Dr. Linneman. He said, I ought to come talk to you. So that kind of thing. You know, they use, the students use the honors label all sorts of ways. You know, they, when they apply to graduate school, they will use it. When they apply for fellowships, they will use it. But when they apply for how, when they apply for rental, off-campus rental, they will use it. Because, you know, who wouldn't want, you know, for women in the honors program to be their tenants when, when they could have them. All right. Um, what will the summer reading and listening look like, says Jaden. Um, so the, um, the first year faculty are having a very animated discussion about this. And I've told them they've got to come up with an answer by May uh, for what the summer reading, because we want to be able to let you know what they're going to be. But they typically we have uh, two or three books and maybe some podcasts and maybe some, uh, um, some video viewing. And then we run uh, discussions and these are just, you know, come if you want discussions uh, with faculty during the summer. So we'll just schedule them at a time when, you know, whoever. So we had last summer, we had, I don't know, like 80 people or so join us when we were talking about um, the book, Washington Black. Um, because this book was chosen as the uh, Whatcom Reed selection, which is a countywide uh, book club that happens. And the author was, um, was coming to do a big thing. And, and the author actually did come and did a big thing with a, uh, an honors class. So we had um, this, you know, Pulitzer finalist, uh, 10 best book of the year author, um, meeting with honors students for an hour uh, about a month ago. Um, so yeah, there's uh, info about honors prologue. Um, you can always send questions to the honors email. And that's kind of where I should make sure I, I, uh, everybody understands. If your question wasn't answered today, either through me or through the chat, uh, make sure that you send it to the honors email. It's just honors at www.edu and somebody will get back to you with, with an answer. Um, again, I'm... I'm sorry I don't have more definitive, clear answer about the waitlist, and I know I really um, I sympathize because that, that must be uh, frustrating. But it's just kind of the way the world has gone this this uh, this year. So, you know, my guess is it'll all get sorted out. Um, somebody did ask about can you apply to honors if you come to Western without getting in on the first try, and the answer is yes. We do have. Um, a, a few, well, it kind of varies between five to 10 students who choose not to go on each year. And so out of 200, it's, you know, about 5%. Um, and, and we fill those. 
And uh, there's Danny Edgel saying he didn't get it. And we, we say, hey, this is somebody who's interested, who's doing well at Western, who's stayed in touch with us, come join us. And so we have five to 10 students start the honors program in winter quarter each year. And um, in my experience, they do really, really well. So it's never been, never been a problem. So that's the thing, stay in touch. Um, Kirsten, are we supposed to end this session or do we just sort of let it run? Um, you know, this was, they're originally designed folks, these are originally designed as 30 minute sessions with some Q and A time afterwards, but I mean, this whole thing has been Q and A. And then there's another session that's supposed to start when at three, is that right, Kirsten? Um, we are, our, our session time was from two to 2.30 and then we're um, open from 2.30, I think to 3.30 for just open questions. Oh, okay. I didn't know if there was another session that was supposed to start at 3.30. Um, all right, so what other questions do you have? I've, I've been practicing answering questions lately because I've been walking around campus with families that are visiting and, um, and there's, um, sometimes I get surprised. I mean, sometimes the questions are really uh, quite new and those are, those are fun to try to answer. Um, um, Brady. Uh, oh, thank you. Um, I, I want to ask, so um, if you're like in the honors program for like uh, for a, a year, can you can you be in the honors program for consecutive years? Mm, yeah, so the, the honors program actually is designed to run from when you arrive until you graduate. So the very first thing you do is this first year sequence of classes. The very last thing that you do is the honors capstone senior project which is, um, you know, some students would call it their senior thesis. Danny did a very thesis-like piece of work. Other students do more creative works. Uh, it doesn't even have to be in your major, um, but it does need to be a partnership with a Western faculty member and you have some sort of scholarly product. So it does last over your two, three, or four years at Western. Um, the, uh, the thing to remember though is it's not every quarter. It's very likely that you will have a, you know, many quarters where you don't even take any honors classes because it's the first year sequence um, and you might take honors colloquia in your first year. So we have students who'll take their first year, first year sequence humanities class and maybe they'll take um, the honors colloquium in economics or the honors colloquium in psychology in the very first quarter that they arrive. So you need to take the first year sequence two colloquia and then in your junior and senior year you need to take two seminars honor seminars and the, the honor seminar and the capstone senior project that's the extra part everything else counts as general education so those are classes that you have to take anyway so the extra part are two three credit seminars which you know the graduating seniors will tell you well i don't know ruthie can you say anything about the seminars because here's a graduating se senior right here next to me. Um, what specifically about the seminars? Yeah, Did, are they worth taking? Is it is it a I think burden? So. <laughs> I think um, they're often like some of the most interesting classes that other students I know and like myself have taken at Western. I did one about murder ballads, which is like a very niche music genre that I <laughs> I'm into, um, and one about like spirituality in literature. Um, but they're super diverse in like what kind of subject they're about. I also think they're really interesting in terms of like, they're about a certain subject, but you don't have to have any really previous experience about that to take the class. So you can be a creative writing student and take like a biology seminar and get into really interesting conversations about science and math and other topics that you wouldn't really talk about in, you know, your sort of major classes um, in those yeah. upper level, so. I think they're really interesting and often some of the best classes at Western. I got an email yesterday from a, a senior faculty in biology who is teaching her first honor seminar right now on uh, plant chemical communication. And she said, I've been teaching at Western for 28 years and this is the best teaching experience I've ever had. And that just came yesterday. I thought I would mention this seminar that's coming up next year because maybe Danny Edge will want to come back and take it because we have a journalism professor who happens to be K 
Canadian, and he is teaching a seminar on the economics and politics of hockey because the Kraken start this fall. So the, the Kraken are building all their facilities right now. The Kraken will be the new NHL team. And he's a Canadian hockey fan, but there's a lot more to hockey. There's politics associated with hockey. There's economics. So it's going to be, that'll be a really cool class. Um, Thank you. Yes. Uh, you bet, Brady. Good question. Um, so, yeah. So I see that there are questions getting answered in the chat. Um, if anybody wants to um, wave or unmute and just ask away, you can do that. Um, there aren't any language classes. So uh, Kendall is asking about language classes. There aren't any honors language classes, um, but it's true that a lot of honor students take language classes. So, um, you know, the, that's probably the most common of the additional minors or the double majors are language because a lot of students will have taken languages in high school and they can jump immediately into fairly high levels so they can quickly get a minor or, or get a major. Um, but that we have students who come in and say, well, I, you know, I've taken Spanish for six years. I want to start something different and I'll start taking Japanese or Arabic. So, you know, that's what you can do in college. You're in charge of your own, your own self. Um, okay. Uh, Danny, that's very nice of you to offer to answer questions. He put his email right in there. Um, so, yeah, so uh, if we can save this transcript of the chat, apparently there are people who would be interested. Um, and I have seen that done. Um, so we will try to figure out how to save the chat transcript before we log off. Um, so if you need to go to another session, um, you're welcome to do that. Or if you wanna stick around and ask more questions, we're here for you. Uh, okay. Oh, Jaden asked about taking seminars first year. Uh, if you're a full running start student and you arrive with a hundred credits, that means you have junior status. Um, we generally recommend that you at least wait until maybe your third quarter, spring quarter before you start taking seminars. Um, the seminars are really designed for a very experienced college students who, um, who, who know how the conversations work. Uh, do we have honors classes on fish? Well, that's interesting. We do have an honors seminar that is going to be offered by the, um, probably one of the best teachers I've ever met, uh, Leo Bodensteiner from uh, uh, Environmental Sciences. And he's, he is our fish person, uh, but he's going to be teaching a class on temperate lakes, which is a little unusual for a seminar, but he's figured out a way that he can do it where creative writing majors and bio majors can, uh, can uh, benefit from that. So Kylie is, is asking a question that looks like it was, um, that it was uh, planted by me because I'm a, I'm a geologist. And in fact, there are, <laughs> there is the honors colloquium in geology. It's our introductory, it's equivalent to the introductory majors class in geology. It's offered every year. It's being taught right now uh, by a good friend of mine. And I think what great, great young, young uh, teacher, um, uh, Allison Pfeiffer. Um, and so, yeah, she's got, I think 15 students in her introductory class instead of you know the 80 that I used to always teach when I was not doing honors stuff. So absolutely there is honors geology in it. Next year it's going to be taught by the chair of the geology department who I think sometimes the chairs do this. They're like you know I I've had a rough year I need a little teaching treat and they uh, assign themselves the honors the honors class. Um, Dr. Housen is pretty entertaining so. Um, Let's see, anything else? In there was a there? question about the geographical makeup of the honors program students. Uh, where, yes. where do they come from in the country? Right, so um, not very many international students, usually under 10 per year 
in the uh, in a cohort of 200 or 220. Um, approximately 40 to 45 percent out of state. So we have uh, students pretty much from all over the West, like every state in the West that might be considered a WUI state, you know, for the WUI scholarship is always represented. Um, but then the last five years we have had students, I think I made, I asked Kirsten to count or somebody counted recently and we were at 38 different states. Um, so we do have uh, students who apply from the East Coast, from upper Midwest, from Texas, from Florida and you know, so it's it's quite a mix, and I, we like that difference in perspective that students from different backgrounds bring to each other, and I think that's makes those conversations even more um, more interesting and have a higher potential for um, expanding your own way of thinking, as if you're hearing from people with different backgrounds. Um, but it, uh, if for somebody, so Kate is asking about taking uh, lots of AP and IB classes and wondering if those transfer over to the honors classes, they only apply to the general classes. Um, so good question. Uh, are there clubs that have strong ties to honors? Well, there are clubs within the honors program. So the, um, what we call the uh, student honors board is basically the student leadership group that that plans events um, and that uh, uses a club like um, structure, you know, where everybody gets to be in the club and they do elect a, a leadership and positions inside. There is a, a honors of student color group, um, but I wouldn't say any other clubs are particularly, well, I mean, there was a, a writing club the last few years that was founded by four honor students um, but there, you know, there were plenty of students in there who were not part of that. They, what did they call that one? That was the one that uh, Eli started. It was the writer's block. Yes, the writer's block. And so, I mean, so that kind of had a, you know, I don't know. What I'll tell you is that honors program students don't have a large H tattooed on their forehead or on their lapel or anything. They're pretty low key about the honors thing. Um, and you know we don't have garb or gear or you know honors pencils. It's um, people generally just uh, you know they just do it. You know they they don't make a big deal out of it. We don't have honors written in eight foot high letters across Eden's Hall. Um, you know if you're living in Eden's and you are a first year student and you're in a you know a calculus class or something and you say oh yeah I'm I'm in Eden's well they'll know. I mean it's not a secret but. It's, uh, it's not a big deal. Um, I can also kind of speak to that a little bit. Um, I definitely noticed in my, in my later years on campus, because I had, a, I had a lot of friends who weren't part of the honors program, like my closest friends weren't, my roommates weren't. And you would, they would like discover that I was like friends with people that they thought were outside of our social group. <laughs> And it was like typically the people they knew from work on campus or from their department. And every time they would be surprised that we had like mutual friends in that way, it was because we knew each other through honors, which just speaks to the fact that honor students tend to um, really like know each other mostly in the first year because we're all in the first year sequence together and stuff like that. But then in later years branch out and tend to kind of, uh, it, for lack of a better word, infect wherever they go <laughs> and just like end up, you know, usually taking on leadership roles and stuff like that in places where they go after that and become really known quantities in their department or their club or, um, you know, their, their work on campus. And so they, there's a lot of cohesion in the first year and then branching out in the later years as you kind of go into your own um, field and stuff like that. Right. So <clears throat> The honors program is uh, compatible with every major on campus. And so you, know, you might have gotten to know, I don't know, 40 people through the honors program really well in your first year, whether it was because of the floor on Edens or the first year sequence that you took. But the chances are that those 40 people will be in at least 25 different majors. And so you will know people who are in very different sort of places in the university uh, or spaces as they say. Um, just because of that, uh, that diversity of interests. 
Um, okay, so there was this question about uh, Democratic Republican uh, leanings. Um, you know, we don't. Uh, I, I would say the more interesting way to put that was uh, our students will come out probably with the first year sequence understanding what Republicanism, you know, the original Republicanism is and means, um, because there it is discussed in um, the first year sequence, and so um, I think. You know, my view of college is it's a time for people to figure out who they are and what they think. And that's what we really uh, emphasize is people figuring out their own, what they think. So um, other questions. Yeah, there was some, um, there is some of the ancient Greeks and then there's some of the um, Romans and yeah, this, <laughs> This one was really interesting this year. I don't know if I can hold this up. I don't know if you can read that. The uh, Adam Smith's The Theory of Moral Sentiments. Some of the classes were reading this one. Oh, I can't see it because of my background, but um, uh, kind of hard book to find, um, you know, because everybody reads uh, the, the famous economics text, but the theory of moral, moral sentiments is really one of the more interesting things that Adam Smith ever wrote. So. Um, there was a lot of discussion that came from that. Uh, yeah, enlightenment, <laughs> all right. Um, okay, anybody else? Kirsten, do you know how to save the chat? Um, Can we figure that out? I, I am going to try, I'm hopeful, but I wanna wait until we wrap it up so that I don't okay. like somehow cut us off. So I will sure. give it my best. Yeah, I will not close this down until we figure that out. Um, so um, right on. Um, is there a professor from the CS department in the honors program? Um, presently, we don't have a, a GUR CS class. Um, we do have CS professors who will frequently uh, propose and sometimes be selected to teach honor seminars. Um, but that the honor seminars are done through a competition each year, um, but we don't have a CS colloquium. Um, the CS department is under pretty high enrollment stress right now. I mean, and, and so the chair of the department will support a faculty member who's chosen to teach an honor seminar through this competition because it's um you know it's really a form of um faculty retention to give them a, a teaching treat like that um but well now kendall has asked yet another good question about do we have a fish tank dang i think we need a fish tank although you know there will almost certainly be discussions about the captive nature of of uh, fish and the the moral implications of keeping fish in a glass tank. Um, mm -hmm. But and as long as they got good conditions, you know, if you, you put a bait in a cup, that, that is some very yeah. bad captivity. Yeah, if you get like a goldfish, like three hundred gallons. Oh yeah, I think that might be something we you can work on. Um, you know, there's a question here from Jaden about. Uh, does WWDU distinguish honors uh, only for undergrad? And if you mean undergrad versus graduate programs, uh, there is no honors program for graduate students. Um, and uh, yeah, I, th I think that's probably, is that what you meant, Jaden? Okay, yeah, there's no, um, now that, uh, as I've already mentioned, you know, uh, honors students, honors program students will frequently go on to graduate school afterwards. Um, and I'm imagining that, I mean, I certainly hope that the experience that they had in their honors classes have been useful in preparation for both applying for and, um, and succeeding when they're in, uh, in graduate school. I mean, Seems to be based on based on the alumni that I've been talking to. Um, okay, so other questions. I 
<laughs> uh, well, you have others. I mean, you have friends who went on to graduate school. So you have more samples than that, buddy, you know. Um, I just I just hear from our alums uh, occasionally and they send updates and, and it's always just amazing what they're doing. Um, okay, <laughs> and of about four, yeah, that's more like it. Um, okay, other, other questions that you may be, you know, sitting on or bouncing around in your head that you wanna ask about. Kirsten, is there anything else that I should have been talking about? Um, well, I'm, no one has asked yet about the application process itself. And so just in case there happened to be anyone who hasn't applied to the honors program, I might just share that the, the best way to hear about that might be to set up an individual appointment. You just email us at honors at WW. Um, but I'll, I'll leave that out there um, at, as an invitation in case anybody wants to probe a bit further. Right. So our, I mean, I think everybody who's still in this session probably knows that we have a separate application. So you apply to Western and you have to apply to Western honors separately. And our, our main deadline was uh, March the 15th. Um, but we, you know, we will look at all of them after that. It's just, we have, we will give definite priority to those before March 15th. How many each year are students doing um, honors and CS? Um, no, that's a good question. Um, uh, uh, it used to be relatively rare, like probably under, under 10 a year, but in the past three years, it's jumped. So I think right now CS is probably the second most popular incoming major after biology. I think biology is still the most popular incoming major. Psychology tends to be up there. Environmental science tends to be up there, but CS has been jumping up that list. Um, and I think these are students who, you know, uh, you know, kind of see um, computer science or, um, you know, data engineering uh, as their career future, but they also want to be, you know, a, a better rounded, more interesting person. And that's how they see honors employing. Um, so Jaden, it was good to see you. Thanks for stopping by. Um, we will see about getting the chat, uh, the, the chat um, transcript together. So if you need to run, go ahead. It is three o'clock, but I'll hang out. Kirsten will hang out. I don't know if Ruthie can still hang out answering questions. So I was just going to speak to the, the honor CS thing. I, I definitely recall um, being an upper year student taking, you know, these literature seminars alongside my upper level economics and math courses and with my friends who were majoring in math and CS. And we definitely saw the um, requirement of taking these honors courses that had nothing to do with our, our majors as kind of like a benefit because we were continuing to fine tune our more qualitative critical thinking skills and um, you know, learning more about literature in, in a way that we wouldn't have been able to do had we been just doing our standard like major course. Right. Um, and, and I we also keep track of the, um, the majors that people are in from their senior projects. Now, just because someone is a CS major, a graduating CS major, doesn't mean that their CS, their senior project will be coding related because it doesn't have to be, it doesn't have to be in your major. So we have had CS majors who've written novels because they can, um, but typically they will take their, um, their group, uh, it's usually a group CS senior project that lasts over a year and carve out a piece of that and expand a piece of that for their honor senior project. That's, that's typically the, the path that most of them take. Well, uh, thank you very much for this. And I hope, I hope to be in honors. Well, thanks, Brady. It was great seeing you um, and stay in touch, man. Yeah. Okay, take care. Thank you. Um, uh, so this might be a question for the students. What do you think is the benefit of being in um, an honors program or honors college uh, rather than um, non? So uh, 
Ruthie, you want to take that first or Danny? I don't, I don't care. I mean, I have my answer, but you hold more credibility than me. Yeah, I can take that. Um, I mean, I think if what you're looking for in college is um, to like sort of learn new things and sort of, you know, expand your horizons, like you can go to college and your main goal is to like get a better paying job and, um, you know, sort of like just get through college as fast as possible. And like, that's a decent goal for sure. I have friends who have done that um, and are very happy. But I think if you're looking for sort of like a more like broaden your horizons and like get as much out of possible as like in four years as you can, um, honors is really good for that um, with like just providing opportunities for really getting out of your major, um, the seminars and the first year sequence, as well as like the senior project, if you want to, um, can sort of push you to not just be stuck in like one major for four years and really learn things that you wouldn't otherwise. Yeah, and, and I'd say to just kind of build off of that, like there was a, a question earlier on that was, you know, what is the benefit of honors, uh, of doing honors at WWU versus going to a small liberal arts school? It, it's kind of like the benefit is you get all of the benefits that come with going to a large, well resourced, re resourced university, but also that of going to a small liberal arts school where <laughs> you're closer with your professors you're required to get a more well-rounded education of um, pairing your more applied methods courses alongside um, you know liberal arts broader comprehensive education and um, I mean I can just know having been having been a few years out of it <laughs> and gotten gone to two other universities <laughs> um, I still come back to Western during non-pandemic years uh, when I'm you know, making the round visiting friends in Washington. And I have met up with the former director, some of my old professors, and you, know, you, you form connections with your professors that you wouldn't necessarily form if you weren't um, in an honors program. Um, and that's something that you know, my friends who did go to those small liberal arts schools are all familiar with, but those who went to the other big, cheap <laughs> public schools um, didn't necessarily get. Right. So it's, it's probably the case that most of our students uh, have applied to and, and most uh, admitted to um, programs like that, liberal arts colleges. And you know, the decision, like I said, comes lots of different ways sometimes it's it's family economics and sometimes it's it's variety of choice and sometimes it's diversity and sometimes it's it's actually geography you know living in this place is one of the finest you know geographic locations in the country i've lived all over the place and you know i've chosen to live here and I'm gonna probably choose to die here because it is such a wonderful place and maybe it's just because we're having this gorgeous uh, what is it, 10 day stretch of beautiful sunny weather right now. I mean, that's a, uh, the, the picture behind Kirsten and I is kind of a cloudy day, but it is, we've had this uninterrupted view of the Canadian coast range all week. It's just been spectacular. So, sorry, I'm, I'm, I'm kind of missing the sun because uh, I'm, I'm in a Zoom room. Oh, there's Ronnie's dad. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for asking, uh, answering my very specific questions. Sorry. No, they're, they're great questions. It's great to see a face. <laughs> Got any more? Um, I actually don't even know whether Ronnie's been uh, accepted yet, so I'm going to go check on that. Uh, oh, okay. <laughs> the letter said either honors or with distinction. I forget exactly what that's. So Western, uh, Western admissions uses a term called admitted with distinction Okay. Um, for any student above a certain particular GPA uh, in their application. Um, so that's different than being admitted to the honors program, which requires a separate application. Okay. Um, so if you're admitted to the honors program, you would have gotten a, a letter, an actual paper letter from, no, the student would have gotten a letter from me um, and, uh, and that would have been clear. And there's, there's next steps associated with it. So maybe, maybe Ronnie's in, um, you can 
No, she hasn't okay. applied for honors yet, so I was just wondering. Okay. Um, you late already? Probably. Anybody else? Questions do you have? Uh, is there a way to see where we are on the wait list? No, I'm afraid not. I'm sorry. Um, and uh, yeah, that's that's about all I can say about that. I'm sorry. Um, so I would mention, Danny, that we had a, um, a student who graduated uh, in uh, econ two years ago who's just finished a master's who has just been accepted to PhD in econ at Toronto. Yeah, so she's starting That's in the amazing. fall. Yeah. That's uh, great. So there's Kate's iPhone. Hi, Kate, do you have any questions about the honors program? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, guys. Yeah, um, I, I wasn't even sure if this was live or if this was a recording because I've been at work all day, so I, I wasn't <laughs> sure. I thought it would end it already. Um, we're, we're just we're just going to keep going and answer questions as long as you've got them. So what's up? Um, well, first of all, I would I'd like to say something directly to you. Um, my last name is Baring, so I think you know my dad, Tom Baring. I think he mentioned you guys went to school together. You're <laughs> that Kate. Oh I'm my gosh. <laughs> Yeah. Are, okay. Been, yes, been, Tom and I have actually talked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what he told me. So Is I've been trying that, to are, all week. I'm sorry. Are you in Alaska right now? Is it that sunny up there? Yeah, it's. Oh gosh, I'll turn my camera around. Um, it's pretty snowy, which makes it more sunny. <laughs> in fact. But, uh, yeah. No, I'd say spring is probably the brightest time of the year, simply because all the reflection from the snow. Yeah. makes it cool. <laughs> but yeah I mean I'm out here in I don't know a long sleeve shirt and I'm too hot so um it's pretty toasty but yeah okay. and, and, and here I thought that summer was taking a long time to come to Wisconsin <laughs> <laughs> yeah. our snow melted a month ago <laughs> <laughs> no this this spring I mean I know we're kind of not talking about honors program right now but this spring was ridiculous it like just last week or two weeks ago, we got over a foot of snow and then everything has been melting like crazy as of Monday. So mm. yeah, it, it felt like winter until about a week ago. I went downhill skiing <laughs> last Sunday. That's yeah, six days ago. <laughs> so yeah, it's been a so, little- Kate, anyway. let's get back on topic here. So <laughs> <All right. laughs> any, any, que any questions about the honors program? Um, so what, oh. I told, what I told people who, who joined us earlier is, um, you know, there, there are the people who've been admitted to the honors program and who have already committed to coming to Western. And then there are the people who've been admitted and who are still deciding and they have until May 1st. And then there are a large number of people, some of whom have been in this meeting who are on a wait list. Um, and mm -hmm. they're, they're really wanting to know what the people in that second category are gonna do. Um, so when somebody knows what they're going to do they should but that's why we're here today is to answer what questions you have that'll help you decide gotcha i think um i think so i called uh i believe it was like the honors program or something because i was confirmed about or i was confused about my own confirmation and i wasn't sure if i had like confirmed or not yet and it looks like i have so i think i'm i'm in at this point but i i don't know <laughs> Like I said, I wasn't sure what to expect with this call. I thought it was recorded. So I don't have any questions off the top of my head. Oh, um, <laughs> okay. Well, when so, you get here, when you get here, I'll tell you some stories about your dad. <laughs> I'm excited <laughs> for that. All right. <laughs> <laughs> from, a, from a few years ago. All right. Um, <laughs> anybody good. else have questions? Um, you know, before I forget, I want to thank Ruthie for being here, answering questions from the current student perspective. And I want to thank Danny for being here, um, answering questions from the alumni perspective. And, um, uh, but you know, if people have more questions, we've been putting them in. Oh, Kate has a question about the dorms. Um, so 
uh, there uh, will be information coming to you from uh, university residences about the move-in process. As I understand it, they're gonna stretch it out a little bit more. It's not gonna be all on one day. Um, so uh, it's classes typically start on the Wednesday. Um, this year, that will probably be Wednesday, the 22nd of September. Um, I'm guessing that they are going to have move-in going on uh, in the prior week. Um, the, whatever honors prologue activities we're allowed to do will be taking place probably on the, on the weekend before classes start. Um, so, but it could be that the move-in will happen, you know, for some people will happen on Thursday instead of on Friday. Typically, honors prologue, we have folks move in on Friday and then honors prologue activities are Friday night, Saturday, Sunday, and then, um, but we're still waiting to see, um, you know, what they're allowing us to do, what, what size of gatherings will be allowed. Um, you know, when people were asking me these questions a month ago, I was like, oh, as soon as we're all vaccinated, everything's gonna be fine and we're all gonna be together and we're not gonna need the mask. And that doesn't seem to have quite happened yet. We're getting closer, but um, what I can tell you is that Western did a survey of all the faculty and staff and current students, and it was above 90% said they were planning to vaccinate. And in general, there's uh, the, the true percentage of who will get vaccinated is even higher than that, depending on availability. So, um, you know, right now, um, it looks like uh, our community, at least, will be highly vaccinated by September. Um, we just have to wait and see what. Okay, so Danny's got to run off. He's a student again. He's got work to do. He's got papers to write. He's got models to run. But it was great to see you. And I'm gonna I'm gonna come back and talk to you about. So we're putting together an alumni board um, mm -hmm. that can help advise us on some some interesting questions. So yeah, please um, do. I'm happy to happy to help out. And if you're in touch with Megan, tell her I said hey. Yeah, I will. She she just sent me an email yesterday. So okay. Cool. Good. <laughs> All right. Um, good to see you. Thanks for coming. Good to see you too. <laughs> uh, anybody else, question wise? Mm -hmm. So, what we're going to do then, Kate, do you have, have you thought of any questions that you want to ask in the sunshine there? No? Okay. Um, so, uh, you know, Kate, um, you, your last name is, is like your dad's, right, Baring? Okay, so maybe Kirsten can confirm that we have a confirmation from Kate Baring. Uh, that's something she can look into. Um, but we can check on that and send an email if, if, you know, if you think you've confirmed, then I'm pretty sure you've confirmed. Um, with that, um, I think what we'll do is, uh, again, thank everybody for coming. And um, I see Claire Gaskell has been able to join us again. Claire, do you have any questions at this point? I think you were on oh, early God, on. No. What's that? No, I don't have any questions right now. Okay. Okay. Will you let us know if you do? I will. Thank you. Um, uh, Hannah or Kate, any, uh, the other Kate uh, Rigberg, anything else? I don't have any more questions. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kate. Uh, Hannah Zine? I'm good as well. Can you tell me how you say your last name, Hannah? You said it correctly the first time. Okay. Hannah Zine. Okay. Thank you. Uh, thank you for being here. And I think we'll just figure out how to save what's in the chat. Kirsten, you ready to do that? I'm ready. Ready as I'll ever be. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Um, well, good luck with the snow melt up there, Kate. And uh, yeah, thank you. you should watch watch your email because we will be writing to you about some summer reading stuff, summer listening, summer viewing, summer discussions. You know, it's it don't it's not meant to at all be um, oppressive. It's it's what you, it's it's whatever you want to do. But um, typically, we give some people some pretty interesting ideas of stuff to read or podcasts to listen to, or films to watch. And then we get together and talk about it. Um, so we'll be in touch. Sounds good. And that's the what? 
Um, missed the last thing. Say it again. That's a Western email address um, that would be receiving those. That's a good question. Do, do those go out onto the Western email, Kirsten? Uh, the or their home email? The communication that I'm sending right now is um, typically to preferred email. And then once we sort of make that transition into fall, so once it gets you know closer to September and the start of school, then we'll start using a Western account. So right now it should be going to your preferred account, but um, if you are planning on going to Western, I would go through the process of making sure that those messages are getting forwarded to an account that you check. Yeah, just make sure you're looking at it. That's good. Um, okay. Um, well, it was very nice uh, seeing and hearing from some of you and hopefully we got your questions answered. Uh, thanks for being here. And uh, I think we'll, we'll, we'll make this a wrap. Um, thanks, uh, Kate Rigberg. Thanks, Hannah Zine. And um, hopefully we'll see you at Western sometime. Thanks, Kate. Uh,